Hello everyone, welcome back to the Blue Cube channel. In the previous video, you learned how to rotate the character's head. Now, in this video, I'll teach you how to rotate the character's body in Adobe Animate. The first point is that to learn from this video, you should already have watched the previous lesson about rotating the character's head. You saw that after designing the head, we placed its different layers in separate sections. If I double click here, you can see that the layers are placed in different parts. In the object section, I can first set this option to single, and in any frame I want, I can change the head's position. That was part of the previous lesson. Now, in this lesson, we're going to design the character's body. Since you already learned how to design the body and its different parts in the previous lesson, and because I know most of you don't like very long videos, I've already prepared a folder. If I open this folder, you'll see that I've placed the body's different layers inside it, which are currently hidden. If I turn on the layers and open the folder I created earlier, you'll see several layers inside with their names written in English. For example, upper arm L means the left upper arm. I wrote these names in English so you'll be familiar with the terms used in other software. Similarly, forearm L means the left forearm, L stands for left. Hand L is the left hand. Torso refers to the upper body, and when I change it, the torso changes too. If I select skirt, it selects the character's skirt, and hand R represents the right hand. If I hide the skirt, the right hand becomes easier to see, which I've placed here. The leg parts are made the same way, foot, chanel, left shin, and the right shin. The right arm and hand are marked with the letter R, for right. Since the right arm is positioned behind the body, its layers are also placed below the body layers. Torso is here, and the right arm layers that go behind the body are placed beneath it. So always pay attention to the order of layers. You can even write these names in your own language, it won't make a difference. Now let's go to the layer we created in the previous lesson for the head. What you now see added to it is the character's neck. If I double-click the head, we see its parts inside the symbol. If I double-click again, you'll see all the head layers that are inside the symbol. Here, I easily created a new layer and placed the neck in it. So the neck must be included inside the head layer. Now I go back to the head section. At first, we were in the main scene where the head was created. When we double-click the head, we enter the head symbol. This section was already created, and later I'll explain how it works. Each time we double-click the head, we went into its layers. It might feel a little confusing, but with enough practice you'll get used to it. Now if I place this head layer here and zoom in a little, you'll see that the neck is positioned here. We can copy the head as many times as we want. For example, I can right-click, choose Duplicate Layer, create a copy of the head, and place it in different poses, even add rotations. For now, I'll delete this copy. I'll drag the same head layer into the Symbol folder. To make sure the neck is between the arms and torso, and not above the hand, I place the neck and head above the torso layer. This way, the neck sits in the right spot. Now I can adjust it, and if I rotate, the head rotates along with it. The rotation center point of the head is also at the neck, so I place it here to make sure rotation happens correctly. Now I want to rig this character with bones. For that, you first need to make sure all layers are prepared correctly and converted to symbols. I'll delete this part that I don't need and keep the character's body here. I select the three layers for the arm while holding shift, move them slightly lower, and push them to the left using the arrow keys.
I also move the body slightly, adjust the skirt, and do the same for the head. It's better if everything is separated. I send this back arm further behind and place it here. The skirt stays here in a suitable position. Now that the parts are separated, I select the bone tool. If you don't see it here, you can find it in the toolbar. After selecting the bone tool, make sure you correctly set the anchor point for each part of the body. For example, I place the skirt's pivot point here so that it rotates from this spot. I set the torso's pivot point here. If I zoom in, I can move it precisely. I leave it here for now. I place the head's pivot at the neck area so it rotates properly. For the arm, the pivot should be here, so it rotates from the shoulder. For the forearm and hand, you can see the pivot set in the right places. I already explained these steps when we studied character rigging. Now I use the bone tool and link from torso to arm, forearm, and hand, creating the skeleton. After creating the bone rig, I place everything back in position. Using the free transform tool, I select the torso, move it here, and fine tune it with the arrow keys. I do the same with the skirt, adjusting its place. For the leg, I select it, use free transform to move it here, so it can rotate from the ankle. Again, I adjust it in place. I'll explain the correct layer order in a moment. I move this back arm here so it's behind the body. I drag the front arm here so it's in front. I also place the head easily in position. So now we have created the character's skeleton. But as you can see, the layer order is messy, so we need to fix it manually. For example, this back foot needs to be placed behind. Hold down control, select the part you want to reorder, and use the up slash down arrow keys to move it forward or backward. I want this leg to go behind the shoe, so I hold control and press the down arrow until it goes behind. For the forearm, I hold control, press down until it's behind the upper arm. I do the same with the hand, sending it behind the forearm. If it goes under the skirt, I bring it back up with control plus up arrow. Now when I test, the back arm is properly behind, and the head is in the right position. If I select the character with the selection tool and rotate, you see the arm rotates smoothly, or the head, or even the torso, or legs. For example, I can fix the anchor point of the torso that was too low and move it slightly up. Zooming in helps. With the selection tool, I select the body to arm joints and set their strength to zero. I do the same for this part, setting it to zero. So now our character has been rigged. If you look inside the symbol, you'll see that only one armature layer has been created, which lets us animate the character exactly as we learned in previous lessons. But as you see here, I already prepared a front view layer. Let me turn it on. In this folder, I created the front view earlier in the same way I just showed you. Now I can view and move the character from the front as well. At this point, I can take the character out of the folder, delete the folders I don't need, and arrange things at the top. I'll name one symbol side and the other front. Now let me show you how to rotate the character in animation. 
From the window menu, I go to Workspace and choose Reset. The panel resets because I need to show you this clearly. Now we have both side and front. I select the whole character, hold shift, drag it here, and align it with the arrow keys. If I only want to use one angle, for example the side view, I can double click here, set it as guide, press OK, and hide it. That way, the front view won't appear in the render. Back in the main scene, I can also set the initial sketch as a guide so it doesn't render. If I double click the head symbol and press Ctrl plus Enter, you'll see only one view. So in this case, we can work with a single angle. But sometimes in animation, we want to switch between two angles. To do that, I first switch the character back from guide to normal mode so it's visible. I want the character to stay in side view until frame 40, and then from frame 40 onward, appear in the front view. So, I go to frame 40 in the side layer and press insert frame. Now I have 40 frames. Then, in the front layer, I click once and then again, and a white square appears next to it. I drag it to frame 41. So we have frame 40 and frame 41. Make sure to turn it on so it shows in the scene. So, notice that our character stays still here, and from frame 40 onward its direction changes. Now, for this character I'm going to create about 40 frames and then click Insert Frame. Make sure when you select the front view in the Properties panel, you set the keyframe option to Object and Single Frame. That way, the head stays consistent. And as you can see, the character rotates smoothly. If you create all the angles, you can rotate the character from any view. Even in this case, you can rotate just the head. For example, I click here, go to Object, Open Frame Picker, click on the head, and change the head's angle. Now you see we have created 80 frames for this animation. You can even make further adjustments, like moving the arm forward. You can do many things this way. To preview the animation, I go to the main scene, create 80 frames on the main layer with insert frame, and press Ctrl plus Enter. Now we can see the animation we created. Any animation you want can be made this way, create the frames first, then test it with Ctrl plus Enter or export the render. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video, goodbye for now.